Hi there. How are you? Good, good. Welcome to another one of these puppet making adventures. I'm about to start working on a project for the Springer Opera House. The Springer gave me my first job out of high school, and I mean right out of high school, like the week after I graduated, I went in for my first meeting and they gave me a job. I've done a handful of shows with them in the past, and I'm honored to be back for Shrek the Musical. I have built for a few productions of Shrek the Musical in the past, including the first production ever of Shrek the Musical Jr. back in 2012? As well as a production that involved me driving a 10-foot dragon to New Jersey in a PT Cruiser. That's a whole other story. <laughs> but today's project involves something a little bit smaller. Gingy. I've gathered some great reference photos. I've seen some not-so-great reference photos. And I have a pretty good idea of what I'm doing. I have one inch upholstery foam, a ton of tan anti-pill Police, and I'll be building a base on this mat board, which is used for framing photos. Before I can make anything in foam and fabric, I have to make a pattern, which to be honest is relatively easy, but it's also super important because I have to make two versions of this guy. More on that in a second. The lines definitely aren't what you would call clean, so I'm gonna fix it up a little before I cookie cutter it out. He's, he's gonna be a big boy. If you're not familiar with Shrek the Musical, the full thing is on Netflix here in the U.S. I was obsessed with this show, and I'm very excited to be revisiting it now. I have traced my pattern onto the mat board here. You really can't see that, but it's there, I promise. I'm gonna cut this out, and then I'll see what we're really working with here. Here is cut out numero uno. You might notice that something's missing. That is because I have to build two versions of this guy because of the scene with Lord Farquaad where he is interrogating him and they have broken his poor little leg. So the next step will be figuring out where the mouth hits in these. There's been an incident. <laughs> this is intentional, I assure you. Our black backing has been covered and now it actually looks like a cookie. Or maybe I'm just hungry. Maybe both. Mouths have been cut out. Before I cover the backs, I need to add some tie points and then we'll throw them in the oven for half an hour at 375 and see what happens. That was just a joke. Do not throw foam in the oven. That's not, I do not endure, don't, don't do that. Many minutes later, the backsides of both puppets have been covered. I feel much better about this stuff once it finally has a face. So I'm happy that we're getting there. I have one. Count them. One. Not totally thrilled that I have to do that again, but I'll take my small victory. Still here. Still going. The second one is technically easier than the first because you know what you're doing. It's still very time consuming. Both of the bodies have been covered. I'm going to make his little foot nubs. Audrey has already started working on his weird little mouth. I'm going to get started on the eyes. I'm going to use these teddy bear safety eyes. That is horrifying. <laughs> this is what will actually be his eyeball. It's amazing what a little fleece can do. Here is the nice little mouthpiece that Audrey patterned out. Basically, it's a tiny little sock puppet. And we'll push this through the hole in that foam. So when he talks, his mouth will keep this unique shape. Oh! For Gingy's gumdrop butt! I'm using that old puppet building stand by ping pong balls. And with a little bit of fabric, it can go from this to this magical. So now it is eyeball time. The most terrifying part of making a puppet, and to be honest, quite a technical process. These are just safety eyes. They poke through the foam of the puppet, and there's a little closure on the back. I like doing the safety eyes on things like this because it kind of indents them just a little bit. Now I'm working on his eyebrows, and then this is gonna get covered with fleece. So this turns in to this. For my last real step here, I am using this EVA foam to make all those nifty little piping details. And while I do this, Audrey is just on the other side of the table over here painting those gumdrop buttons. I used these two paints. This is like your standard like glitter paint and then this is new it's called glitterific and it will explode it says danger of combustion right there so i mix them together and then i just kind of sponged it over the fleece so now he's an explosive gingerbread cookie we are done took about eight hours about a normal person's work day but the story's not over yet you're gonna have to keep watching welcome back. I told you this adventure wasn't over. I am currently on my way to the Springer Opera House to make a delivery. Crossing state lines in the name of 
puppety goodness. The puppet has been delivered, and check this out, right here. It's always weird to just drop a puppet off like that. They say it's like taking your kid to college. I would know because I do not have a child, nor did I go to college. But it's probably a pretty solid analogy. <laughs> As you're watching this video, the show is open, and it just looks fantastic. If you're local, definitely go check it out. They run through October the 10th. So this is where I leave you. Thanks for hanging out while I bake up some puppety goodness. I'll see you next time.